Hi everyone, I'm James from F9 Audio and the Freemasons and I'm here today to show you the brand new Forte piano chord system from F9. Now let's not waste any time, let me show you exactly what we can achieve with Forte with just two fingers. Okay, so let me show you how we're able to get those results out of Forte. What we've done is we split the chords up into a series of parts and laid them out across a MIDI keyboard. Now don't worry if you don't have a four octave MIDI keyboard like this. Every keyboard I've seen has some kind of octave switching system on the left hand side. Uh, and pretty much you're only gonna be using two octaves at once. So from the first octave from C1 to B1, we've got the bass notes of the chords. And in the second octave from C2 to B2 are the mid parts of the chords. In the third octave are full versions of the chords, that is the bass parts and the mid parts playing together. And on the top octave here from uh, C4 up to B4 are some extra notes that are sympathetic to the chords beneath um, and you can build even little mini riffs from this and they're just a little bit of extra fairy dust. But the key to getting all the parts that you kind of saw earlier on is by having the bass and the mid part split up. That's them playing together but because I have the two parts separate I can just build incredibly quick rhythms just by playing different parts with my left and right fingers. Now initially I would suggest starting with the third octave because with the full chords you can kind of work out exactly how you want your sequence to go and this is the beauty of Forte, even though we've supplied the chords it's exactly up to you in which format and which order you want them to play. Now the one thing I will say is up the further ends of the octave from say G onwards we've got some more what I would call slightly challenging chords and although they may seem out of key the beauties of a chord sequence is that when it steps out of the scale sometimes, and that's what we've tried to add in, uh, we've tried to add in here at the higher ends of the octave. Now one thing to remember with Forte is that you need to forget the actual musical notes that you're actually looking at here and think of these almost as pad controllers, and they're all related. So if we take all of the C's here, they're going to be related to that one chord within the sequence. If we take the E's, and that can be incredibly useful whilst you're actually working your sequences out. Now, one of the beauties of piano chord voicing is that you don't always have to play the same bass note to the mid part. So we can, for example, go. And it's those things that I think you're going to have the most fun experimenting. Not every combination is going to work because when you get down to these more challenging chords, you can get the old clash. Uh, but do experiment. As I say, we're just giving you the chords. It's totally up to you how you want to use them and how you want to put them in your track. But for me, one of the best parts about this entire system is that because we're just playing back chords with MIDI notes, we don't have to worry about tempos. Um, if you think about piano loops, when you try to time stretch them, you move them a couple of BPM outside of the actual tempo that they were recorded, they start to sound grainy and they start to sound nasty. Here we're just triggering the chords, so you could work at 60 BPM, you could work at 200 BPM, it's honestly not going to make any difference, you can even do tempo slowdown. <laughs> Now 
Now, obviously any system like this is perfect for pad-based controllers. And here I've got Machine Studio set up with another one of the chord sets called Billboard. Now we split these up into two separate groups. The first has the bass notes at the bottom here on these blue pads, the mid chords, and these correspond so pad one and pad nine play together, two and 10 together, three and 11, and the same works up here, so five and 30, all the way to eight and 16. Uh, and if we jump over to the second group, we've got the full chords and the top notes. But having them split up like this, you can still get all of those classic piano rhythms going. Now the only thing we have had to change on the machine format is that we wanted to keep the pad workflow that makes machines so successful alive. Um, so rather than putting it into keyboard mode, which would split the 12 chords unevenly on the pad surface, we've reduced the number of chords and it's priced accordingly. We have though picked the best eight chords that we feel from all of the chord sets. Now we have added two pages of macros on the machine version here, which will allow you to control all sorts of things like the release of the chords, <laughs> The attack even. Start position, great for some staccato effects. Turn the release down with that. And we've got another set loaded in here called uh, 90s. Uh, let me just go to the second page and play through and let me show you what you can do with these. Now I'm just going to take you through some of the DAW specific functionality of the pack and I'm here in Ableton Live. I've got another one of the chord sets um, up called Manhattan um, and I'm not going to go into the installation of all of this. All the installation instructions for all of the formats are in a full PDF manual inside the pack and let's face it YouTube time is precious and at any moment another dog could be on a skateboard so we can't really hang around. Um, I've got a small uh, MIDI file just playing back some of the chords. <laughs> Uh, first of all, let me take you through the rack controls on each individual rack. Uh, we've got a release control, which is great for chopping these down to much more staccato chords. Even attack as well, if you want to take, take this into a more pad direction. High pass filtering. Resonance underneath. Low pass. And this interesting little control down here called M1 Presence. Now what I've tried to emulate here is the uh, the kind of process that was used at the original recordings of the M1 piano. It's almost like an emphasis. There's a shape of control to add some grunt from the sampler. So quite a nice selection. Now if you unfurl this, you'll actually see that I've done this in Side Simpler. I'm in 9.5 at the moment, which is why we've got the new waveform display. So this should be completely compatible with Live Standard as well. Uh, you can even slip this over to Sampler if you've got um, the full version of Live, the suite, and really start mucking around with some of the new filter types, etc, etc. Uh, now, moving on. I've also added two effects racks into uh, this pack um, that have got a variety of controls. As you put them in, they'll, they'll come uh, bypass, so do turn this on first. Got some standard parallel distortion. 
some squish. And we're already starting to get pretty heavy. Additional bite. A little room reverb. So quite useful for just general processing. Now the next rack is specifically designed for breakdown parts in your track where you want to throw these into some tasty effects. So let me just play this MIDI track through and um, this little MIDI pattern through and I'll start to twiddle these and show you what you can get out of it. Okay, so Logic, and I've opened this in Logic 9 to show you that it's fully compatible with both Logic 9 and Logic X. It works with EXS instruments and channel strips, and they're available here. I've got the breakdown chord set open at the moment. It's a much mellower chord set, uh, this one. And for each um, channel strip, I've set a number of plugins that I think uh, actually complement the, the, the sound. Let me just play you this through. But I've also added a whole series of um, other processes that you might find useful. For example, we've got another M1 simulator here. Let's just whack that in. Um, now, they will all default to the 9th Avenue because I didn't want them to have this enormous set of channel strips. But then just flip through the EXS and load it in whichever chord set that you want. Here's the Manhattan one again. And while we're here, we might as well take you on a little tour of the thing. Um, let's start with 9th Avenue. Uh, the second one, okay, Flight. This is kind of referencing those wonderful uh, late 80s Minneapolis chords that Jam and Lewis were pulling. Got to be one of my favourite chords, that last one. Okay, the more Disco Manhattan you've already heard. A classic house set now built mainly out of triad chords. The next chord set I want to show you is called Minnesota. Now I'm sure you're starting to hear that each one of the 12 different chord sets has its own particular sonic flavour. And that's because they've come from different actual physical recordings. This one comes from a clunky old upright piano and is great for some lo-fi action. The next set I'm going to show you is called 90s and it's got a lovely warm feel that complements the major 7th chords. As part of the Logic package, I've also created nine channel strip settings perfect for processing pianos in different ways. So here I'm just going to apply the 90s chorus effect. give you a quick example of some of the other flavours I've created in the channel strips, let's just pull up the SP12 emulation. So we've got a little bit of bit crushing here, a little bit of distortion and a little bit of EQ work. Okay, now let's take you through the Reason refill and I'll show you some of the other uh, chord sets. I've got the Studio 44, another disco, nice and bright and powerful chord sequence. A 
and the top notes really sing out there. It's all been very carefully recorded and put together so that it sounds just like those kind of chic recordings that we all know and love. Now, whilst I'm here, I'll take you through the controls of the combinator. You've got a delay mix and delay feedback knobs. And I've also got a button here that will just instantly turn the delay into a triplet delay, which can be really handy for piano parts. Here it is without. With. They're just two of the most handy piano timings for delays there. Uh, you can also turn the diffusion on the delay up. Just gives it a little bit more extra space. There's a plate reverb. Uh, this button here will actually turn on a chorus circuit that almost emulates the CP70 and CP80 electric piano range from uh, Yamaha. There's a squish control. Which hammers in a very serious uh, compression and distortion little rig and you can turn a bandpass filter on within that. Add these to the delays and the reverbs, it's great for breakdowns. So let's go through some of the other chord sequences whilst we're here. This is G drop, which does a descending sequence around G minor. And now back to the upright sound for the chord set called Alabama. Now whilst we're here, there's just one thing I want to say about this pack. We're putting the chords in front of you, and as I said before, it's totally up to you in which order that you do them. But you do have to be kind of careful because it is possible to create piano riffs that have been used on other records. For example, if I were to take the Alabama chord set and play them in this order, then another Brighton resident might have something to say about that. But let's face it, everybody loves a bootleg. Now just quickly onto Contact, and you'll see we've got a small custom GUI within Contact, uh, and I'm here inside Logic X, and I want to show you um, one thing that a few people have asked me, how you actually automate the controls from a GUI like this. Well, it's fairly straightforward once you actually understand. Um, Inside Contact, you've got the standard tabs that you'll know at the top, the Filing System, the Libraries tab. On the right, you've got the Automation tab. Um, now, I've got one of the um, MIDI files for this particular set of chords. It's called Triad. Here's the set. And let me just play this MIDI file back. And let's say we wanted to automate the filter closing down here. The way to do it is grab any one of the control numbers from this list. So I've got number two here. And you'll notice when I stick it near any one of the controls, the little plus sign turns up. So I'm over the low pass filter there. Oh, it's just disappeared. Let me do that again. Drop it on. That is now assigned. That automation route is now assigned to that control. Now, unfortunately, Logic dumps them right at the bottom of the list. So you'll see it's starting at three there at the top of this list. You need to come all the way down to the bottom, annoying as it is. And I've already got a couple more set up. There's this one. So now I can actually draw automation in on that filter. It's a little bit confusing, but once you know how to do that, it's dead simple. Um, there's another point I want to quickly make with contact, and in fact, all of these libraries. Don't always stick with the key. If they're not in the particular key that you're working with, these will take quite a bit of transposition, because remember, they're not loops, so they're not going to suffer from time-stretching artifacts. So we can maybe drop this down even four semitones, and you'll get a completely different tone out of the chord set. <laughs> And 
I was just automating another couple of controls there. So let me just take this filter sweep out and open up contact. Um, and one thing that is quite useful, if you want particular some vintage sound to the samples, stick them into SP1200 mode. <laughs> The SP1200 was actually a drum machine, but it had a fantastic little quirk when you detune samples against the internal digital system. Let me just set this back to standard tuning a moment. You, here you won't get any of that aliasing sound. That was exactly how a SP1200 works, that the moment you change the tuning of a sample, the aliasing kicks in. And gets more pronounced as you actually detune. So that's it guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of our first Forte release. We've got plenty more planned, and next up is a whole series of chords that have come straight out of the Jupiter 8 and then been abused by everything we could find in the studio. Forte Piano Chords is currently available for Ableton, Logic, Reason, Machine, and Contact, right now at F9 Audio.